Hello, everybody. Grace and peace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I had this um, person, the Watcher 100, uh, comment on my page, and I just want to answer a bit of this. Um, he writes, okay, I'm not a Muslim, James, but the Bible also teaches us to kill witches and disobedient children and murders, and God told the Hebrews to kill the Hittites, the Jet. Jebusites, the Gerashites, the Canaanites, and a good many other nations. How can you look down on the ones who follow the Quran for the same things that are in the Bible? Polygamy? All of the patriarchs just about had uh, multiple wives. Okay. First of all, I look down on the Quran um, for teaching people to kill others for not believing in Allah and Muhammad and the last day nor hold what is forbidden when God ordered the Hebrews to kill these tribes Leviticus 18 shows what they were doing they were having sexual relations with their family members with animals they were not restraining themselves um, they were offering their children to Moloch, they were sacrificing their babies on their altar. They were having sex with men, as a man should with a woman. Homosexual activities. And it, is, and it defiled them, and it corrupted their nation. And actually, if you go back in Genesis, you see that God kept the children of Israel in slavery for an extra 400 years because these nations weren't ripe for judgment yet. Their sin had not fully reached their uh, maximum amount for him to have the moral authority to kill them, to destroy them. And so he had to watch his own people suffer in slavery before ripening this nation to be judged. And as we see, uh, in verse 27, For all these things were done by the people who lived in the land before you, and the land became defiled. And if you defile the land, it will vomit you out, as it vomited out the nations that were before you. So it's not just arbitrarily saying, go out and kill them for not accepting Muhammad, or not accepting Allah. That's the problem I have with it. Let's look at the next problem, and I really have to make a warning to Dewacha 100 and any other people on here who are teaching but really have no authority to teach the Bible or don't know it well enough to be teaching it. Because God says that he will hold those who teach the Bible to a higher standard and a higher authority on Judgment Day than regular people. Because if we're teaching wrong things about the Bible we will be held to a higher judgment because meaning we're misguiding them with the words of God. So this is a big warning to you to be careful what you're doing. He says that, uh, then he, he, he mentions, of course, the killing witches and disobedient children. Well, the problem is that Israel was supposed to be that city on a hill for the nations, that they would look up to it and see the these are the people of the living God, the children of God that he saved, which he did. And they knew that, in fact. When you see that they were starting to can conquer can Cana, they knew about the miracles that God had done in Egypt. Yet were still rebellious. Much like many Christians today. Although nothing is new under the sun. Or, sorry, many people who claim to be Christians but are really not. As we will see, the Watcher 100 is one of the this person um, now as far as killing witches and disobedient children that is because these sorcerers were misguiding the people about who God was and leading them to idols and leading them to do these detestable things that in Leviticus 18 we saw them doing this is why they were to be put to death now let us look at Muhammad he is one person who is likened onto a witch who is a false prophet and the Bible is clear to put to death those who speak presumptuously who speak in the name of God but he didn't but really didn't and we see this through the satanic verses that God spoke through uh, that Satan spoke through Muhammad and that many times he was unsure about what 
whether he was getting re revelations from God and tried committing suicide. But that's besides the point. So there's one prophet who, by the biblical law, false prophet, should have been stoned to death. Look, they didn't stone him to death. And look at all the problems he's caused in the world. This is a huge satanic attack on the world made by one man because of the failure to people back in barbaric times to follow the word of God and put him to death. Now, of course, we know through Christ's teachings that we are in a new covenant, that we are to let he who is without sin cast the first stone, meaning leave it up to God to make these judgments of condemnation on people. This was at a time to protect the people that were in the city on the hill so that they would not become defiled or corrupted. He didn't just arbitrarily say to go out and kill. Moreover, disobedient children caused nations to fall. Rome fell. Why? Because the family structure fell. And we see this happening now in America and many Western nations. Is that these children are become disobedient and the society is lacking a proper function. Lacking proper authority. Lacking proper uh, structure. And it's only heading to be worse now. We are at a time where we have such great tools of technology where we can show the faith where you know old days is over. People did things that claim to be who claim to be Christian like through the dark ages because they were historical about uh, hysterical about um, the plagues. They didn't properly understand it. Now we have a time to we can break these this dark age thinking. Yet people are still being blinded. And it's time to step up our game here. Now he mentions polygamy. And this is what some of the patriarchs did. Well, first of all, Jacob was tricked by, um, the, by uh, his father-in-law. And he didn't want to do polygamy. So we have to understand that context. Another thing is that there's a difference between the Bible recording things as it is so that we can learn from and so that it teaches us where nations or different people came from and what they did. And there's a difference between God's teaching in the Bible. So some people did some things. The Bible records it good or bad because it records the truth as it is and how God deals with these people and God's teaching. And we see this in Matthew 19 when Jesus, um, uh, verse, uh, when, when Jesus um, uh, quotes again Genesis. Haven't you read, he replied, that at the beginning the Creator made them male and female and said, for this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife. And the two, not the three, the four, the five, or the six, or the seven, or the eight, the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one. Therefore what God has joined together, let man not separate. You see, so you need to understand this difference as well, that it's just because the Bible says things to tell us where a nation came from or a group of people came from does not mean God taught them to go out and do that. Now, let us show you how filthy this man is, that he is no Christian, and he's on no authority to speak of this thing. Look at all he has is women shaking their butts on here. Shame on you. You are no Christian. Jesus said, by their fruits, you will know what kind of tree they are. And all you have on your channel is rotten fruits. And shame on you. And if you continue this way, Jesus will say to you, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who work wickedness. And shame on all these women who do this. For the righteous judgment of the Lord will fall upon you. And you will not be able to withstand it. You think the Spirit of God is living in people who do these things? Absolutely not. Thank you for watching, guys, and take care. Heed my lesson and learn from it.